Thanks for checking out these clips on the web show. Last Man Standing 2 happening in Melbourne, June 9th, Wednesday night at the uh, showgrounds. It's going to be absolutely unbelievable. Live on main event right around Australia. And uh, always fun following the career of Nathan Carnage Corbett, who's the headliner down here and the favourite for the tournament. It's going to be awesome. So uh, coming down from the Gold Coast in the hotel room in Melbourne on a chilly morning before the media conference, uh, pulled the camera out and had a chat. Is it a weird feeling for you even just having Brecky in and it's the first time you get to see the guys sit down near you that you're going to be punching on with, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit. I mean, I think when I look back at the one in Sweden, it was a better, probably a better feeling because I didn't know anyone there. Um, going in sort of as an underdog uh, in some respect, but you know, not many people knew me over in, in Europe at, at that stage. So coming here, it's kind of like, you know, the bit of the favourite, all the fighters are Australian, so I just feel like a little bit more um, pressure and a bit more anxious because of that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're just the same as anything anyone else, whether it's in Europe or in Australia, it's just another fighter in the, in the ring, so. Yeah, so it's always weird, the calm before the storm, I can't imagine what the fighters must go through, but for the friends and family, it's a, uh, a nervous time as the guys are about to get it on, and there's Nathan talking with Thor Hoopman, they could be fighting, it's going to be a huge tournament, and here's the press conference. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, press conference for the Last Man Standing 2, I'm Michael Chavello, I'll be your host today, your commentator on main events on Wednesday night. For the first time ever, we're going to the Melbourne Showgrounds, the Expo Hall, very excited because if you saw Last Man Standing 1, you know what a high level of tournament fighting this is. And as we like to say, this is the most exciting form of fight sport you'll find on television. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely huge. Make sure you get it on main event live around Australia. And here's Michael Chevello talking about the carnage. You know, Nathan Corbett's a man who needs no introduction whatsoever. He is one of, if not the pound for pound best fighter in Australia at the moment. A multiple world champion, he holds world titles as a light heavyweight, a cruiserweight and a heavyweight and maybe the most dominant cruiserweight, not maybe, he is the most dominant cruiserweight in Muay Thai and kickboxing history. Yeah, some big raps there and well deserved and here's Nathan with the microphone. Well, look, look, you know, I haven't uh, seen, seen much from Rob Bowman this uh, before, like I said, he doesn't have too many fights with his tummy here with a big heart and he's going to punch on, I'm sure, so it's going to be a great fight. Now, outside of that, you know, look, I respect all the fighters here, they're all, they're all champions in their own right, they're all, you know, put in the hard work. Um, it all takes a lot of work to be here, so I don't really care what, you know, the press are, what anyone thinks. You know, I might be the only person on the poster, but to me, we're all, we're all, uh, we're all in it together and I've got to get through three fights before I can start saying it on the hand. So, to me, it's each fight at a time. And um, I've come here to win, of course, I've trained hard, I'm in good condition and I'm looking forward to it. You know, yeah, so Nate there, humble as ever, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. The best heavyweight fighters in Australia all going at it in a tournament, and I thought I'd grab the camera and do some interviews for the web show. Here with the man, Michael Chavello, who'll be uh, calling all the action, mate. Uh, Wednesday night, what have we got look to look forward to? Uh, particularly you getting excited and getting oh, us all pumped. Man. Tell us about it. It's great to be home for this one. I've been abroad a lot lately, so it's good to come home. You know, it's always good to uh, to, to commentate these guys. I'm looking forward to seeing Nathan. It's been a while since we've seen him in an eight-man tournament, and uh, he's going to get no favours here. He's he's probably got the, the the biggest underdog first up in, in Tilliard, but the guy can cause an upset. But after that, the going gets rough. You know, guys like Andre Munier and you know McKinnon and Slowinski finds his way in there. It's just so hard to call. So hard to call. Mate, we sit at home and we get pumped from your commentary. You know, you build it right up. What's it like for you sitting there ringside with these guys throwing I'm, leather right in front of you? I got the best seat in the house, man. I can't believe I get paid for this shit. Seriously, I got the best <laughs> seat in the house. It's it's incredible. And you know that the moments are like you know, those few seconds when Nathan walks to the ring yeah, and right. just before they're about to touch gloves and, and get it on. It's like the most exciting moment in, in fight sports. So anytime that happens, it's like just ecstasy for me. So hopefully I get to go into ecstasy three times on uh, Wednesday night and uh, see him run them all the way to the title. Well, mate, look forward to it. I talk to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Michael Chevello there, who always does a great job, especially calling fights like Carnage versus McKinnon. The first one was an absolute war, and it could be the final of this tournament. So I had the camera out to catch up with Steve. We're well, here with uh, Steve McKinnon just after the media conference. How are you, buddy? Good, mate. <laughs> Wait, how do you feel? I've just been speaking to Carnage about what it's like when you walk down and see all the other guys you're about to bash on with. What sort of stuff goes through your mind? Oh, you get um, the fire in your belly starts to burn, you know, but uh, it's a few days before the fight, so you just got to calm, calm the fire, you know, just just save it. <laughs> you know, the fight you had with Carnage a few years ago, mate, people still talk about. Uh, does that go through your mind in a tournament like this? Do you think I'm going to get him again? And what, what sort of stuff do you think about? Or is it all eight? Uh, it's, it's all eight, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to meet him in the final. That'd be great. 
that'd be that'd be the ideal ending. Yeah. So tell us about some of the stuff you do for training. Like how hard do you work in between? Like getting yourself ready for this? You just kill yourself? <clears throat> I train really hard. I train twice a day. Um, we, we train in preparation for this kind of tournament. Uh, you know, so because you might have if you have three fights in one night, uh, then you've got to train train like that. You've got to train hard, have the little rest, train hard again. And so we're prepared. Mate, come Wednesday, good luck. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Yeah, so if Steve makes the final, it will be an absolute war to remember. But speaking of wars, one of the greats of all time, Stan the Man Longanides, and a quick chat with him. How are you, champ? Uh, I'm very good, very good, very excited uh, for tonight, tonight's press conference. Uh, a stack of heavyweights out there, and uh, of course, Nathan, one of my favourites right now, so I'm looking forward to seeing Mate, that's what I wanted to ask you. How do you feel when you, I mean, you're, a long time ago, you were the king of the world, and now you're watching guys like Carnage. What do you think of him? How, does he impress you? Uh, look, he's very impressive, and uh, you know, to create a legacy, it's, it's not just talent. You got to have other components as well, and I see a lot of that in him. I, saw, I see him; in, he's a humane sort of guy. He's a guy that's, that's humble, you know, which is very important. Um, but uh, more, more than anything, yeah, uh, for me to get excited at a press conference and feel like I wish I was 20 years younger, it says something, you know. To see all those heavyweights out there. <laughs> the show that I do, mate, is about people chasing dreams. And in your career, did you do you feel like you lived your dream? You worked hard enough for it. Oh, look, absolutely. I, I surpassed my dreams. My goal, my goal was to win Australia's first world title and to, you know, put Australia on the map. And uh, I think I think I've done that according to all the critics out there. So, but hey, everyone has their season, you know. And uh, even to be a champion, uh, sometimes you've got to lose. To be a great champion, you've got to know how to lose. And there's a lot of components to create a legacy. But I really believe that uh, the criteria, I think Nathan's got it. So you're picking Nathan for it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Good stuff, mate. Well, mate, I'm sure that even these guys here today, right, they probably looked at your career and that's the reason they're fighting. Yeah. Um, what do you think it takes for young people out there? They even might see this online, they think they want to work hard and maybe one day be a champ. What would you say to them? Look, at the end of the day, you've got to sacrifice. You know, how bad do you want it? What, you know, are you prepared to give things up to go up? You know what I mean? And that's, uh, at the end of the day, how I see it. You know, the guy that wants it bad enough, he'll sacrifice and, and pay his dues. He'll live it. And that's what it's, what it's all about. Awesome, mate. See you Wednesday night. Cheers, bye. Yes, yeah, so there he is, one of the greats, Stan the Man. And time for a quick chat with the promoter, the man who's put it all together, Tarek Solak. What sort of effort does it take for you to put a show like this together, I'm wondering? Must be a mountain of work. Uh, there's a bit of work involved. Uh, it's just, you know, a bit of thinking, getting the right guys in, getting the right sponsors, but the most important is getting the right TV deal in. Once you do that, the rest just sort of follows itself up. So everybody thinks uh, to put on a fight night, uh, you've got to get this or that, but I always say, if you haven't got television, you've got nothing, and yeah. the right television deal is very important, not the wrong one, well, of mate, course. The show that I do is all about people chasing dreams and stuff. Was it always your dream to get into this? Was this something that you just dreamed of doing, promoting shows all over the world? Honestly, no. Uh, I actually fluked it, but when I did, I uh, done a good job at it. Um, <laughs> I was more driven of just driving a convertible car when I was a young kid, so um, when I first got 500 bucks, I bought it all sleek and I just <laughs> chopped, chopped it up with an axe and... Uh, had a roof, roof off and I was driving it until the police stopped me and said, okay. have, you got, have you got engineering reports for this? <laughs> so, that was my dream. Okay. Well, tell us about Wednesday night, mate. This is going to go online tonight and it's, uh, what is it, is it Monday here? In it's uh, Monday in Melbourne uh, and the fights are in Wednesday in about 50 hours so or so. So people have time to go on main event and get it and why should they, mate? Cause it's going to be a cracker, isn't it? Look, uh, I honestly think it's the best fight I've put together. It's the best uh, heavyweight card that I've put together, uh, especially the rivalry between South Australian Paul Slewinski, Queensland Nathan Corbett, Thorn Thor Whitman, New South Wales Steve McKinnon, Melbourne Andre the Giant is putting it on everybody today here at the press conference. And uh, besides these guys, a couple of good overseas international uh, talents. And I'm pretty excited about uh, it. And last time we had a last man standing, uh, it was middleweights, nine fights, we had seven knockouts. This time it's nine fights, heavyweights, so I'm, but we won't be surprised if we get nine knockouts. Could be amazing, man. If it was 90 kilos, I'd back carnage with everything I've got to beat all these guys, but at 105 cut off, it's a bit of a challenge for him. Uh, what do you think? Who's your favourite for it? Look, uh, on paper, carnage is still the favourite, but uh, everybody's a great champion here today, and uh, I think uh, they've all got a fair, ch fair chance with each other, and... Uh, I think it's not just a matter of who fights the best fight on the night, it's who fights the best fight with less injuries on the night. Right, so you've got to last, that's why it's last man standing, so you've got to last the fights. All right, mate. Well, on behalf of everyone, thank you for the work you do, and uh, Wednesday night's going to be a rocker. Thank you. Yes, there he is, Tarek Solak. Make sure you get it on main event, June 9th, Wednesday night in Melbourne. It's going to be absolutely awesome.